CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. Two calls for justice and accountability after two little boys die, while another high desert mom and her boyfriend face charges of murder. Justice for Anthony Avalos and for Gabriel Fernandez. Those were the demands today from demonstrators in Palmdale and in downtown L.A. They want answers from the Department of Child and Family Services. And CBS 2's Lisa Siegel is live in Lancaster, where the mother of 10-year-old Anthony Avalos and her boyfriend were in court. Lisa. Well, Pat, Jeff, we are here at the Criminal Courts Building in Lancaster. I was inside the courtroom behind me. Now inside, the mother and boyfriend of 10-year-old Anthony Avalos, as you said, faced a judge. The arraignment, though, was continued until August 3rd. And while the couple is in jail right now, if they were to get out, they must stay away from Anthony's siblings. Bail has been set at $2 million apiece. Well, the matter of Kareem Ernesto. Heather Maxine Barron, the mother of 10 year old Anthony Avalos, along with her boyfriend, Kareem Leva, appeared in a Lancaster courtroom facing a judge. The mother of the young boy and Leva are charged with murder, torture, and abuse that led to the death of Anthony. Investigators say the couple tortured the boy in the days leading up to his death. Anthony was found unconscious at the couple's apartment and died after being taken off life support. We've confirmed he had severe head trauma, bruises, and lacerations all over his body. I don't want them out. That's where they're supposed to stay. They need to stay there so no other child can be hurt. Justice for Anthony! Earlier today in Palmdale, members of the community rallied outside the DCFS office demanding change. They say Anthony should have been removed from the home after so many calls to DCFS. They were also mourning the loss of Gabriel Fernandez as well. Mickey Martinez says she didn't teach Anthony, but has reported at least five cases of abuse to DCFS and says none have been handled correctly. They trust us to help them as adults, and we're doing the best we can by reporting it. And, you know, we're doing our job, and the people above us, those people aren't doing their job. And a similar cry for justice in downtown LA as loved ones of Gabriel Fernandez rallied together. The eight year old Palmdale boy died of abuse at the hands of his mother and boyfriend. This despite multiple calls to DCFS. Gabriel's aunt says Anthony's case is forcing the family to relive their own nightmare. It's hard to relive this, and I pray just reliving Anthony so we don't have to relive another third child's because it is really, really sad. So much sadness right now, so much anger, so many demands for justice. Now, if Avalos's mother and boyfriend are convicted as charged, they could face life in prison. In Lancaster, I'm Lisa Siegel, CBS 2 News. Back to you. Lisa, thank you. It has been now one week since the shocking death of Long Beach Fire Captain David Rosa. He was shot in the line of duty. A public memorial will be held tomorrow at the Long Beach Convention Center. Rosa was shot responding to an explosion at a senior housing complex, and police arrested 77-year-old resident Thomas Kim. Rosa was a 17-year veteran with the fire department. He was honored back in 2003 for pulling another firefighter to safety from a pit filled with foam, water, and crude oil. Today, Rosa's family and friends held a special gathering in Long Beach to remember him. Michelle Gili was there, and we'll have their special stories coming up on CBS 2 News at 6 o'clock. Again, Captain Rosa will be laid to rest tomorrow. Of course, we'll have live coverage of that funeral, which begins 10 a.m. right here on CBS2. The remaining suspect in an Azusa man's murder is now behind bars. Police arrested 21-year-old Matthew Luzon near a movie theater in Montebello on Saturday. He's accused in the beating death of 20-year-old Julian Andrade. He was beaten unconscious at an Azusa house, then left to die in a remote canyon. Yeah, police arrested three other men between the ages of 18 and 21. Officers believe Luzon argued with the victim, and then later the four suspects beat him with a metal chair, a rock, and a broken glass pipe before dumping his body off the side of a road. Studying new developments in the case against Harvey Weinstein, he could now face life in prison. The former movie mogul is now indicted on sex charges against a third woman. The felony charges include predatory sexual assault, and that has a maximum life sentence if he is found guilty. Today, the Manhattan DA released a statement saying the grand jury indicted Weinstein on some of the most serious sexual offenses under state law. Police arrested the disgraced mogul in May after he turned himself in regarding two other sexual assault cases. And developing news at this hour, chilling new details about a foiled 4th of July terror attack on Cleveland. 
Agents say the suspect, Demetrius Nathaniel Pitts, also had his sights on California. FBI shows that Pitts discussed possibly traveling to San Francisco. And that's where he'd conduct targeting and reconnaissance on behalf of Al-Qaeda. Investigators arrested Pitts yesterday. They say he wanted to pack a van with explosives and attack Cleveland's 4th of July parade. The feds moved in after he had a disturbing conversation with an undercover agent. Pitts again, on his own, expressed his allegiance to Al-Qaeda, his desire to participate in a terror attack on July 4th in Cleveland, Ohio, his desire to kill military personnel and their families, his desire to kill federal and local agents. The FBI says he also wanted to attack Philadelphia. Agents began an undercover investigation after Pitts posted threats against the U.S. on social media. And now to this story today, an L.A. City Councilman was one of many protesters arrested today outside of ICE headquarters in downtown. Councilman Mike Bonin zip-tied and led away by LAPD for blocking ICE headquarters. And protesters said that they wanted to highlight what they called human rights abuses by the agency under President Trump's policies. Now Bonin says some detained immigrant parents who were separated from their children are being held at this facility. This is, it, it, it's disgusting and sinful and evil. Future generations are going to ask, when they were stealing children and imprisoning them, where were you? And I want to be able to look back with a clear conscience, and I want my son to look back and know that I stood up and did everything I can to make sure this horror stopped. Many at that protest called for the abolishment of ICE, which was created by President Bush back in 2003. Well, President Trump says he has interviewed four candidates already to be the next Supreme Court justice. The president says he still has to meet with two or three more candidates before making his decision. CBS News has learned that two of the leading contenders are Washington, D.C. Circuit Court Judge Brett Kavanaugh and Chicago Circuit Court Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Today, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders refused to comment on that situation, but the president said he will announce his final pick one week from today. We'll be announcing it on Monday, and I look forward to that. I think the person that is chosen will be outstanding. The president has also met with key senators, including Maine Republican Susan Collins, who says she will not accept a judge who wants to overturn Roe v. Wade. The White House says the president is not asking candidates about the subject. And coverage of potential Supreme Court candidates continues right here on CBS 2 News at 6.30 on the CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor. All right, well, bye-bye, Cleveland. Hello, L.A. Yes, the overhaul continued for the purple and gold with LeBron <laughs> James joining the Lakers. And sports director Jim Hill talked to a former Laker about that big move today. And he joins us now with the details. I wonder who that former Laker is who has two jerseys retired at Staples Center. That would be Kobe. And he played 20 years. That, that's <laughs> that's exactly name. who it would be. It better that's be, name. that's for sure. <laughs> Well, my friends, it quite possibly is the biggest acquisition in free agency in the history of the purple and gold. LeBron James joined the Lakers after agreeing to a four-year deal worth $154 million with a player option for the final season. Now, after James arrived in Los Angeles on Saturday, Laker president of basketball operations, Magic Johnson, met with James at his home in Brentwood. And earlier today, I spoke with former Laker great Kobe Bryant about Magic's acquisition of LeBron James. These things are such, you know, they're touch and go, right? I mean, it's like you, you don't know until, until it's actually done and executed, right? Because things change on a whim. Um, so, but, you know, you got to think about this for a second. Think about the career Magic's had as a player. Uh, think about his career that he's had as an owner. And now look at what he's doing as president of basketball operations. I mean, he's, and they might want to think about putting another statue up for this guy, man. One of the other things is the great... Oh, the great friendship that you and LeBron have. I wanted to welcome him to the, to the organization and to the city and to the family, right? I and mean, this, this is a community, man. We all rally around each other and support each other. So you know, just letting them know I'm here for him for anything he needs, uh, him, his family, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, we're here. And, uh, you know, the, uh, anything that, you know, I can do and my family can do to help them, uh, you know, we're all for it. Uh, Magic certainly did the same thing for me when I first showed up here and uh, did the same thing for me and Shaq. And, um, so I'm, I'm just really excited and happy for him, man. That's what the Laker family is all about. Meanwhile, today the Lakers have signed point guard Rajon Rondo 
to a one-year deal worth $9 million. He averaged eight points and eight assists per game last year for New Orleans. And after renouncing Julius Randle and making him a free agent, he signed a two-year deal with the Pelicans for $18 million. Now, just remember, it was just last Tuesday that Magic Johnson had announced he would step down if he didn't acquire a big-name free agent over the next two summers. Mission accomplished so far. <laughs> and my how time passes really, really quick. It does. And, and was there ever any doubt? No, we, remember we talked about yeah. it. When he says something like that, he's got something up his sleeve. He yeah, knows what's going on. Absolutely, because he never would come out with a statement like Why'd that. Why'd he call him magic? Yeah. <laughs> he solidified that position, mm -hmm. didn't he, real yeah. quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Jim. And hey, you can hear more of Jim's interview with Kobe Bryant on our website, cbsla.com. And hot commodity ahead of 530. Fans are racing to get their hands on LeBron James Lakers merchandise, of course. So we'll show you what's already available out there. Found alive. How about this story? The boys' soccer team trapped inside a cave in Thailand for nine days, finally being rescued. The latest on the efforts to bring them back to safety. Plus this. Saved by their baby, meet the new blessing that helped a local couple stay out of the line of fire during the Las Vegas mass shooting. And forget moderation, a new study that shows knocking back way more than a few cups of joe every day could save your life. And here's a live look with our Santa Monica Pier camera. Looking at the shore, this beach is going to be packed by the end of the week. I'll tell you why as we are gearing up for a big warm-up.